News Channel 8. I'm Glenn Drake, broadcasting live, of course, from Village Mall right here in Barron Spot. Today's October 15th, and the big story today, Hurricane Omar moves closer to the territory. Governor John DeYoung issues a curfew, in effect, this evening at 6 p.m. That's this evening at 6 p.m. Our very own Wes Smalls on the beat today at Plaza Extra made his rounds throughout the island and get the pulse of what's happening here in St. Croix. Wes? Well, there is a 6 o'clock curfew for tonight. This information just comes from VIPD spokesperson Melody Rames. I'd like to go to Melody Rames right now. As, uh, she just got this information from Government House, this about Hurricane Omar. And Police Commissioner James McCall has issued an alert to all residents and visitors of the Virgin Islands that there will be a 6 p.m. curfew in effect from this evening, this Wednesday evening, and that will continue um, until a word has been put out that the curfew has been lifted. This means that the curfew does continue tomorrow um, uh, throughout the end of the storm and then while the emergency crews are out there picking up any debris or anything that has been um, affected by the weather. Right now we have a lot of roads on St. Croix and also on St. Thomas and St. John that have been flooded. Some roads have collapsed and also um, some roads actually um, have been diverted. People cannot travel on many roads. So the best thing to do is to stay off the roads at this time um, until the police department and the government gives the all clear. That information again coming from Miss Melody Rames, as you can see behind me, Plaza Extra still packed uh, before curfew, people getting their last minute belongings like water, canned goods and so forth, crackers and um, canned foods, uh, anything uh, that's uh, not refrigerated and uh, people are still shopping last minute supplies, batteries, people are trying to pick up their medications and so forth. Don't forget one more time to check on the elderly and the handicapped, make sure that they're okay. Now's a good time to make sure you have books, supplies, and games on hand for the children. Power can be out for some time, so we wanna make sure that the children uh, are not are at least doing something with their time. As I said before, News Channel 8 will have inserts throughout the day and we'll keep you posted with our staff meteorologists so we can keep you updated on the update of Hurricane Omar. From Plaza Extra, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thank you, Wes. Well, of course, um, civic organizations, government agencies closed today, including the Department of Education. In the press conference, our very own Lee Call spoke to the commissioner. With the Commissioner of Education, uh, uh, she has uh, been here for this press briefing, but I thought it was important that we find out, uh, since we've already experienced some rain, schools were closed, Commissioner, how have we been doing? Pretty well so far. Um, our teams have been out visiting the schools. Of course, they were out last night, this morning, just trying to get a handle on anything that's happening. But so far, we haven't heard any reports of any major uh, flooding or leaking thus far. And it looks like some of the early work you did uh, prior to this probably helped, right? Yes, I think so. With all of the work we did earlier um, this summer and after school started, I'm hopeful that that has prevented a lot of this from happening. And overall, as you look at schools right now, mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, are, are uh, any of the schools still, uh, I understand some people have complained about projects that have been slowed down or lack of funding. How are we doing that? You know, that's always a major consideration. We have uh, several major projects that we just kicked off. A lot of the work at Central High School is now underway. That was work associated with accreditation. And we're working with Public Works to get our Cancine cafeteria going and working on the Can, um, the Ken Gymnasium as well. So some of the concerns are legitimate, but I just want everyone to know that we're working very closely with the Department of Public Works to try to address some of these issues. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. The VIPD is issuing extra precaution on the roads. Once again, the curfew is in effect at 6 p.m. this evening. The roads are terrible out there. Our very own Wes Small and the news crew of News Channel 8 was out on the Melvin H. Evans Highway today. Here's Wes. I'm standing here on the Melvin Evans Highway, and as you can see, it's a virtual river right here on the left-hand side of the road going east. I have to tell you something. Curfew's coming up at 6 o'clock, and the shelters are open at 12 noon. If you don't have to be out on the roads, essentially, please look at this. We're just leaving Fredericksted. 
And what's this area around uh, um, Good Hope? Carlton, Carlton, Good Carlton area. Look at this. Folks, be careful. Right now, I'd like to throw it to our governor, Virgin Island Governor John DeYoung, for an update on Hurricane Omar. The abundance of rain has led to mudslides in various areas of the islands, in areas that we're all well aware. This is a result of the rains of this weekend, but also the rains of the past several weeks. We've also seen flooding in several low-lying areas in both districts and in some of the usual trouble spots. The Adjutant General and his staff, the leadership of Vitima, and representatives of my office have been in constant contact with our partners at FEMA and other agencies to make sure, certain that all procedures are in place for immediate assistance to the territory in the event such assistance becomes necessary and is required. I'm extremely confident that our government is prepared to weather this storm and take the steps that are necessary to make sure that we mitigate any of its full effects altogether. I'm also extremely confident as a territory that we are better prepared than we believe from our past experiences, but it's required that we still do the necessary planning that is necessary. Well, now we're at the American Red Cross chapter on St. Croix, and I am here with Wilda Davis and her staff back here. All the volunteers are in place, and we do have to tell you there is a 6 o'clock curfew. News Channel 8 has been breaking in throughout the day. Now we understand Ms. Davis has some information about the St. Croix Educational Complex, which is our shelter. Yes. This afternoon, we are opening the educational complex. It opens at 12 noon. Well, there you have that information. Remember, if you break curfew, $200 fine, three months in jail, all looters, you know it's going to happen there. Please stay off the road. Do the right thing. Be careful, Glenn. And remember, all this area, look at this. It's all flooded out. News Channel 8 is urging you to stay off of the Melvin Evans Highway. Take Center Line Road. We'll keep you updated on situations as they allow. I'm West Small for News Channel 8. When we come back, we'll find out how our brothers and sisters are doing in the other islands. We have Caribbean to report coming up next. We'll be right back.